A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver... The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Oh! Practicing medicine in a small, drought-stricken western town presented many difficult problems. Young Phil Donovan realized this as he faced three angry men. Jay Keith, the town banker, Sheriff Mills and blustering, hard-bitten Buck Donovan, his own father. For the last time, Phil, I'm asking you to tell everything you know. I have told everything, Dad. Oh, He's yeah. obstructing justice. That's as much of a crime now, as... Now, to... wait, wait a minute, Mr. Keith. You well, too, like... Buck. Simmer down, both of you. Oh, now, listen, Doc. You're the doctor in this town, and I'm the sheriff. Both jobs are for the good of the community. I hope so. A week ago tonight, Mr. Keith's bank was robbed. He shot at the outlaws, but they got away. With all the money I and every other rancher had to our names. If that oh, means... Wait, wait a the... minute. As you know, Doc, I got a posse together pronto. We line out for Cottonwood Canyon, figuring the outlaws would try to reach tall timber. And after searching for three hours, we can't find hide nor hair of them. We do find you driving your rig back to town. That's right. You admit you went out there to treat a gunshot wound. But you won't tell me who the critter was or what he looked like. I would if I could. I don't believe it. To think that a son of mine would be... Is that fair to me or to the rest of the folks who live here in the valley? Sheriff, all I can do is repeat what I've told you before. It's the truth and that's all there is to it. All right, Doc, tell me again. Maybe I can pick up a lead somewhere. You're wasting your time, Chief. I'll be the judge of that, Mr. Keith. Go on, Doc. To start with, I didn't even know about the bank robbery. I didn't hear the gunfire. Everybody else heard it. It might have been because it was windy that night and cold. I had a fire going here in the office. I'd been working late. It must have been about midnight when I heard a knock at the door. You, doctor? Yes, come in. Uh, What's your name, Indian? Uh, me, Tonto. Somebody sick out at the reservation? Me not come from reservation. Come from camp, camp in Cottonwood Canyon. Fella hurt plenty bad up there. Need doctor. What's wrong with him? You find out. You come quick. Oh, it's pretty late at night for a trip to Cottonwood Canyon. But if it's an emergency case, naturally I'll go. Good. You have saddle horse? I use a rig from the livery stable. Wait till I pack my bag and we'll get started. <laughs> 
few moments later, Tonto and Dr. Donovan walked to the livery stable. Then, with Tonto astride Scout leading the way, and the doctor driving a horse and buggy, they headed for Cottonwood Canyon. The night was dark, and a strong wind was blowing. But shortly after they entered the canyon's mouth, Tonto raised his arm to signal a halt. Oh, ho oh there. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. I saw your signal, so I reined up. Uh, Is this the place? There's nothing here. Uh, camp, not far. Let me show you. All right. Hello? Uh, did you bring a doctor? Uh, yes, I didn't think... Masked, an outlaw. You could be mistaken, doctor. I should have expected this. Midnight call, an Indian. I suppose the patient is suffering from a bullet wound. Yes, that's right. And that I'll be forced to treat him at the point of a gun. You won't be forced to do anything. There's a man seriously wounded, covered by a blanket over there by the fire. A doctor can save his life. You're a doctor. It's against the law for me to save do... Save lives? No, but that mask. You and the Indian must be outlaws. No, doctor, we're not outlaws. I'm reasonably sure the same thing is true of the wounded man. Don't you know him? Isn't he part of your gang? We found him on the main trail about an hour ago. Bullet in his back. Otto gave him first aid treatment, but the bullet is lodged near his spine. It will take an experienced doctor to remove it. This is the first time I've ever heard of the good Samaritan wearing a mask. Or a doctor who's more concerned with law than medicine. I... All right, I'll look at the patient. Good. I'll remove the blanket. Uh, wait a minute, doctor. Is it absolutely necessary that you see a man's face to remove a bullet from his back? Well, no, I... Oh, this is serious. It's a good thing you kept him from turning over. He's unconscious. But what difference will it make if I see his face? He wasn't unconscious when we found him, and he wants his identity to remain a secret. Oh, and you still claim you're not outlaws? Everything I've told you is the truth. Well, I suppose you'll kill me the minute I finish the job. There's no sense in two men dying. Good. Need as much light as possible and some hot water. I'll fix the lantern. Tonto will heat the water. Ah, uh, me do it. Very quick. I removed a 45 bullet from the man's back, treated the wound to prevent infection, and got into my rig and started to drive back here alone. You know the rest. You met me on the trail. Yeah, but when we doubled back to that camp, the owl hoots had gone, taking their wounded partner with them. I cautioned the masked man and the Indian that the wounded fellow would need rest and careful nursing for several days. Then you admit you aided escaping outlaws. I admit nothing. I believe what the masked man told me. I don't think those men were outlaws. Oh, no. uh, maybe you're right, Doc. But it looks suspicious. Of course it does. Well, I guess there's nothing else I can do except keep deputies up in the canyon looking for those critters. By the way, Dr. Donovan, on which side of Cottonwood Canyon was this outlaw camp located? Uh, the north side. Why? Nothing. It just occurred to me that Cottonwood is the dividing line between your father's Circle T Ranch and Matt Barlow's Flying M. Those outlaws might have been... Some of Barlow's sneaking cowhands trespassing on my range. Why, Juniper, if I... Just got... a minute, Buck. Now, wait a minute. Your feud with Matt Barlow has nothing to do with the bank robbery. I'm not so sure. Didn't the yellow-livered varmint run out on the Cattlemen's Association? I've called for a meeting tonight, and I'll lay eight to five he won't be there. Matt went to Fort Worth to try and raise money for all the ranches. You know that. That was over a week ago. Why ain't he back? I don't know. I've got enough worries trying to trail bank robbers. I'm sorry I can't be of any more help, Sheriff. And I'm sorry, too. Sorry that you've disgraced the name of Donovan. Started when your mother was alive. The two of you planning on you becoming a pill roller instead of an honest, two-fisted cattle rancher. There's nothing wrong in my being a doctor. Except that I haven't been very successful so far. And you never will be, running with outlaws and lying about it. Your name may be Donovan, but from this day on, you're no son of mine. Let's get out of here, Mr. Keith. Yes. My old buck is really riled up. That's the way he's always felt. Might as well come out now as any other time. It's the drought last summer. No water, no pasture. Hundreds of steers dying every day. All the ranchers in the valley were broke even before the bank was robbed. Now they're really worried. I know. Dad's long-standing feud with Matt Barlow doesn't help the situation. Uh, the smaller ranchers don't know which one to listen to. I hope Matt gets back from Fort Worth tonight. Yes, but I'm not much concerned. You heard my father's opinion of me. I think both of us would be better off further apart. You mean you're going to leave town, Doc? Why not? Well, I thought, I mean, you and Matt's daughter, Lois Barlow, 
You two are... Uh... So did I. Maybe there was a time when Lois felt the same way. But we can't beat a feud, a drought, and... And now the suspicion that I've helped outlaws. Oh, I didn't say that for sure, Doc. I Forget just... it, Sheriff. You have to go to the cattlemen's meeting and... I have a lot of packing to do. I guess all of you gents know why I'm calling this meeting. We've got to do something and do it quick. Yeah, but what? Winter is here. And because of the dry spell last season, there's no beef to sell. Oh, oh, man. Man. The bank hauled up last week, took all Maybe of our money. Maybe the find that money. That sawbone son of yours, to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Who are you, stranger? Rance Hawkins is the name. Me and a few other boys signed on to Fly and M last week. A boss ain't here, so I'm a speaking for him. Why, you... Mr. What? Keith, the banker, told us all about it. Doc Donovan is in cahoots with all of us. I don't know. Maybe he is, but that's got I nothing to do with... get her it. and ride the pill roller out of town. Oh, oh, wait. Man. Just a minute, you crazy hombres. Those two shots went over your heads. If there's any more rail riding talk, I'll lower my sights. I'll sit down. Go on with the meeting. Sheriff Mims. What? Lois Barlow, what are you doing here? I haven't had a word from Dad since he went to Fort Worth. I thought you might have. Nope, but I wish Matt was here. Some of his cowhands are making war talk. I know. I heard what that man, Rance Hawkins, said. Maybe he does work for Dad, but I've never seen him before. All right, Buck, you got any ideas? Sure I have. There's a lot of virgin timber on my ranch, so I cut some of it and hauled it into town. You other mountain ranchers can do the same thing. We can load it onto railroad flat cars, ship it to the sawmill, and use the money to buy feed until next spring. Now, what do you say? Oh, oh, well, well, yeah, that's all right for you, Donovan. How about the ranches down in the valley? We'll all work together and split the money. Oh, oh, Lois. Yes, sir? This crowd of crazy galoots might be kind of hard to handle when they get outside. You'd better sneak up to Doc Donovan's office. Tell him to get out of there and lay low till he hears from me. Yes, of course I will, Sheriff. I'll go now. The night air was cold and sharp with a threat of early snow when the Lone Ranger and Tonto brought their horses to a halt at the edge of town. Oh, oh, sir. Oh, oh, scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Uh, where is Dr. Donovan's office, Tonto? It's upstairs, over barber shop. Good. Let me call it. Easy, sir. Go up there. Streets seem to be deserted. Just to be on the safe side, you'd better ground hitch the horses and stay close by. Uh, uh, he do it. But you have to do something, Phil. Sheriff Mills oh, said I'll that... Oh, I'll leave, all right. Just as soon as I finish packing my things. My own father and the whole town against me, there's not much else I can do. You can come out to the Flying M for a few days. No one would ever no, think of... No, thanks. It. Things are bad enough without building another fire under the old Donovan Barlow feud. Oh, Phil. It's all because everyone thinks you helped the outlaws who robbed the bank. I know. And I still don't think the men I helped were outlaws. You believe me, don't you, Lois? Of course I do, darling, but I just... Oh, excuse me, Doctor. I didn't mean to interrupt. You? A masked man. I came to tell you that the man you treated last week is much better. I... I'm glad to hear it. Where is he? In my camp. But the sheriff said... I mean, his posse... We moved certainly... the camp, Doctor, for two reasons. First, the weather's turning colder. It's liable to snow any time. Second, uh, the place you visited was on your father's Circle T range... That's the reason the man was shot. I don't understand. I'll explain as much as I can without... Doc! Doc, come down to the railroad side. And... Bad accident. Your paw's been hurt. Dad. One of those big logs. Big logs rolled off the car. Well, I'll be... A masked owl hoot. One of those bank robbers. Oh, you're mistaken, Sheriff. I find him here with you, Doc. Proof that you've been lying all along. No, I'm sure he we'll isn't... We'll see a... about that later. Get down there and help Buck. He needs a doctor. And you're the only one we've got. I'll go with you, Phil. All right. All right. Now you, reach. Get your hands up. Or stop a slug from this 45. Sheriff, I never argue with a loaded gun. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Across the narrow space of Dr. Donovan's office and with his hands upraised, the Lone Ranger faced Sheriff Mills' drawn gun. You and the doc had a lot of nerve holding the confab right here in town. Dr. Donovan didn't know I was coming to see him. He was just as surprised as you were. You can save those lies till later. Right now, I'm going to get those guns out of your holsters. Don't move. Just keep your hands up. I told you you'd made a mistake, Sheriff. Now you're making another one. Yeah, what's that? There's a man walking through that open door right behind you. Behind? I suppose you think I'd fall for an old dodge like that one. I'm going to get... him, Tonto. Uh, what? Get Say, Watch what? out for his gun, Tonto. Uh, oh. uh, may not like to hit Lawman. Oh, that's all he... right. He isn't hurt. He'll come out of it in a few minutes. Uh, we'll leave him here and lock the door. Doctor fellow in plenty trouble. Yes, he is, Kimosabe. Part of it's from helping us. The other part is caused by a feud that's been going on for years between the Circle T and the Flying M. Uh, wounded man, tell us. Yes, that's right. There must be something else back of it. A me not savvy. Neither do I, Toto. But I intend to find out. Look, snow come down plenty fast. Yes, if it keeps on snowing this hard, it'll be three feet deep by morning. Uh, what we do now? Ride back to camp, Toto. We're going to take the wounded man home. He's well enough to travel now. Uh-huh. Me do it. Sheriff said Dr. Donovan's father had been seriously hurt in an accident down at the railroad siding. They didn't bring him back to the office, so he must have been taken out to his ranch. Ah. That is silver. Easy a minute. I'm going out there. Meet me back here later, Tonto. Ah. Get him up, Smoke out. Silver. All through the night, in the bedroom of his father's home, young Dr. Donovan worked desperately to save the old rancher's life. Both of Buck's legs were crushed. He'd never walk again. He seemed to sense this as he called weakly to his son. Phil! Phil! Yes, Dan? The only part I hate is giving up the fight. With nobody to lead them, the other ranchers will never get those logs to the sawmill. That means we'll all lose. Maybe when Matt Barlow gets back here... Barlow! A dad blasted old fool hasn't got enough gumption to... Phil, do you think the log falling on me was an accident? Well, I don't... Some of Matt's no good ranch hands were in the crowd. They could have caused it, and I'm betting that they did. And another Wait thing, I... Wait a minute, I... you've got to lie still and get some rest. Oh, but That's I an order. Doctor's order. I'm going out to the kitchen and wash up. I've been waiting for you. You again? Masked man? Well, where did and you... And while I waited, I made some coffee. Have a cup? Why, yes, I guess so. Good. Uh huh. I thought the sheriff... Hold on, I left the sheriff in your office several hours ago. There you are. Are you? We've well, done quite a bit of writing since then and discovered several things you should know. I? Mm-hmm. First place, Matt Barlow's return. It's the Flying M now, coming over here this afternoon. What? You mean Matt Barlow's going to cause trouble now when Dad's flattened his back and can't oh, there do... there won't be any trouble. At least as far as Mr. Barlow's concerned. But uh, more important than that, the job of getting six carloads of logs to the sawmill. I know. Dad was just talking about well, there's it. There's plenty of manpower. Every ranch in the valley will help with the loading. Sure, the same ones who were helping when Dad's accident happened. Matt Barlow's men caused that. Maybe. Uh, finishing the job is one sure way of finding out. What do you mean? Let me ask you one question, Doctor. Well? Most of the ranches here in the valley are mortgaged, aren't they? Yes, I believe they are. Why? Did any one man loan most of the money? I think Mr. Keith at the bank loaned most of it. Mm, I see. That's the bank that was robbed. The one Sheriff Mills thinks you yes, robbed. Yes, yes, I know. Listen to me, Doctor. Would you like to save the lives and property of all the smaller ranchers at the same time wipe out the old feud between your father and Matt Barlow? That's impossible. Oh, no, no, it isn't. All you have to do is take your father's place. His place? Where? The railroad siding, loading logs. The men will help if they have a leader, especially if the leader's name is Donovan. But I'm just a doctor. I don't know anything about... Most of the doctors I know can handle any emergency. I'm sure you can, too. Will you try it? Well, I... 
I'll try. Good. And I'll see you later. Oh, wait a minute. You haven't explained anything. I don't know who you are or what... time enough for explanations after the job's done. Now I have some other business. Adios, Doctor. A short time later, Jay Keith, the town banker, arrived at his office. You're late, Mr. Keith. What? But I suppose that's one of the privileges of being a banker. Missed. Hold up. Oh, in a way, yes. How'd you get in here? To the back door early this morning. You can't get away with it, I Oh, no, you won't. And I'll take that gun out of your shoulder holster just so there won't be any accidents. What do you want? Isn't that a rather obvious question when we're inside a bank? I'd like to see the inside of that safe. Open it up. No, no. Open it. I know you've got the combination. The law will trail you for this robbery. Well, crammed full of banknotes and gold. I thought you were held up and robbed last week, Mr. Keith. But the bank was broke. It was. I mean, this isn't... All that... right. Close the door and lock it. I've seen enough. You mean you're not going to... I made a note of the combination. Thanks. Now, uh, the file where you keep the mortgages. It's in the drawer of my desk. Uh, yeah. Take them out. I want to see. Hmm. I will take these with me. Yeah, no good. The ranch is broke. Maybe they won't be. For long. What do you mean by that? As a smart banker, Mr. Keith, who's interested in protecting his loans, I can't understand why you're not down there at the railroad siding helping load the flat cars. I'm a banker, not a lumberjack. Mm. That accident that happened last night when Buck Donovan was injured, could it be that everyone was wrong when they blamed Matt Barlow's ranch hands for causing it? How would I know? You could know because you might have hired men from the outside to cause the accident. Would be a good way of keeping the Donovan Barlow feud going. And a good cover for a fake hole up last week. Well, you you loco. Maybe. There's one way to prove it. What do you mean? Dr. Donovan and another crew of men are loading the cars now. They'll still be loading them tonight. And uh, accidents happen much easier at night. That's none of my business. Well, yes, yes, it is. Because as soon as it gets dark. You're going down there and join the loading crew. I... No, no, you, I... uh You and I'll stay right here until it's time to go. Then when you start to work, I'll be close by with a gun pointed right at your head. Mr. Keith, go over there and get to work. No, no, I... Move. And don't try to run away. A bullet can travel a lot faster than you can. Uh, all right. Why, hello there, Mr. Keith. I didn't expect you down here. Hey, I came down to help. That is, if you... We need all the help we can get. I'm glad you're here. What shall I do? Help those men hitch chains around that log. It's the last one to go on the car. See, they're stacked up pretty high. Yeah, sure. I'll help. Come on down there, Big Good, all right. Oh, ranch, Ranch, I'm down here. Don't. I, I can't hold them. They're going to fall. Watch out, the logs are slipping. Her. No, Mr. Keith yelled To save his own life, not the rest of you. What? Why, Juniper's that masked critter again. Who is he? Masked man. How do what? you know that? But I'm more interested in the man on top of that car. You sneak it out. No! Oh! Look at my shoulder. What in tarnation is There's that? the man who caused the accident, Sheriff. Probably the same one who did it last night, too. He was working for your friend... Mr. Keith, What's that? the banker who tried murder, fake robberies, and accidents. 
to start a range war so he could profit by it. But how did you figure out that he... The was... answer's out at your father's Circle T Ranch house right now, Dr. Donovan. Adios. been waiting for you. Lois, I didn't expect you... Come on you... into your father's room. As far as that's concerned, you old scallywag, I'd just as soon beat you in a game of dominoes as beat you out of some rangeland. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can try, but you'll never do it. <laughs> Dad, and Matt Barlow, what in the world are you doing here at the Circle T? Hello, son. Guess I might as well start calling you that. Long as Lois has made up her mind. <laughs> Dad. I thought there was a feud between you two. Well, it's all over, Phil. The redskin who brought Matt and Lois over explained everything. Yeah. That sneak and Jake Keith figured he'd use our feud to start a real range war. Especially if he shot a man and left him on Buck's land. I don't understand. Phil, suppose this critter who got shot knew about this feud between Buck and me. Knew he had been framed, but he was helpless and couldn't do anything about it. Why, uh, Then a masked man and an engine come along. They find this critter lying there wounded, so they bring a doctor to save his life. Masked man? Indian? I thought it was one of the bank robbers. Jake, that... his bank robbery was a fake. Never happened. That's right, son. I don't see a... How do you know all of these things, Matt? <laughs> well, nobody's got a better right to know. I am the man who got shot. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.